This is the front frame of the Ultra T. And we went through pressing bearings in and so forth. There's a very big race in there. If that's backed up against a little bit more conventional rib that's or a ridge that's actually machined into the piece. Uh, this is this again, this bearing. You might notice down here there's an oil seal. And obviously that has to go on first before the bearing goes on. Typically the kind of thing that I do, I realize later on. But in this case, I actually had the seal on first before the bearing went on. This bearing was heated uh, to about 250 degrees, and uh, which doesn't, doesn't bother it at all metallurgically. And then uh, it's, there's a, a very precise uh, press fit on here. This the shaft is, is completely round, not egg-shaped or, 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 or tapered because it was ground uh, perfectly round. And that's important for precision bearings so that you don't, if, if, if the shaft is not round, the inner race will not be round. So as the rollers come on, they have tight spots and loose spots and tight spots and loose spots. And uh, this, this is particularly um, and critical with precision bearings like the angular contact bearing, spindle bearing, and so forth. Not, not terribly critical with this type of bearing, but still important if you, want it to, if, you, if you want to get a good long life out of it. You don't want it to buzz and you don't want it to make chatter marks on your work. So uh, the, uh, these bearings obviously are not sealed, so we have to put a seal on both sides. That's why this guy's here first. He's sealing up against the shaft in the back behind the bearing. Uh, that's the inner race, and of course you have to have provision to grease these guys. Hopefully without taking the whole machine apart. So this little tiny hole right here, is, and hopefully you can see it on the video, that little hole right there runs through and to this zerk fitting, grease fitting, and that's how we're going we're to pack it first, initially before, before final assembly, but in order to maintain this thing, you're going to be pumping grease right in here. And, that'll, and when, once it gets in there, it'll distribute by itself. So this then goes on here, carefully, because you don't want to bang these guys around. And uh, you can't tell this on the, on the video, how, how incredibly smooth this is. It's absolutely smooth. Pressed after the bearing's packed and so forth, this will just be pressed in here. It just presses into that recess and, and rides right here on the shaft. So rear bearing is, a, is a kind of a tight slip fit on here because it's got to be able to move so that we can preload the bearings. Particularly tapered rollers are very, very critical on the preload, uh, just like the front wheels on your, probably the front wheels on your car. Uh, that's why the back of this um, is threaded. Bearing preload on the, the uh, ball bearings are also preloaded, but it is not as critical. So the uh, the intern Mega, for example, does not have any threads. It's, it's just it's just pressed together, torqued uh, to a specific amount, and then locked down. Uh, but this guy uh, has to be a lot more precise and it's going to have a lot more strain on it. So it needs to have something that's absolutely, you know, not going to move. So that's why the very threaded lock is there. So here's another for the same bearing. We have a bunch of these guys. But this is going to go in here. And obviously this guy's not, not going to slip on and not supposed to slip on. So if we want to press this on, extremely straight because we don't want to distort the inner race. We don't want to, we don't want to distort the shaft. We don't want to ding up the shaft and uh, by, by forcing it where it doesn't go absolutely straight on there. So in order for that to happen, small bearings generally can be, you know, force pressed on there. Larger bearings typically are heated. Uh, this bearing, because it's got you know, integrated seals, probably, you don't want to, you don't want to push it more than about 200 degrees and that's not going to be enough for it to fall on there. So we're going to have to press it. We can, we can reduce the amount of pressure we need by warming the bearing up. The safest way to press a bearing like this, in my opinion, is to have a, have a special fixture. This is a piece of Dom tubing that is sized appropriately to fit over this. Although we missed by a little bit, the closest piece of tubing wasn't quite big enough, so we had to open the end up a little bit, which is what you see here. And that's opened up in order to fit down over this because by the time this bearing gets all the way home, there's going to be a, a little bit more left there that we have to cover with this. So this is going to go on here like that and press that bearing down. It's going to press on the inner race only. Now you never press a bearing on from the outer race because all that, that pressure then is going through the rollers 
the rolling elements, in this case balls. But it's just, it's just going to ding everything up. It's going to it's going to burn out or or flatten out spots on the on the uh, balls, and it's going to put grooves in the, in the races and everything else. So you really can't press on the outside. In in a lot of cases, to remove a bearing, you have to pull on the outside in order to get a bearing off, and you can pretty much count on that bearing throwing away after you pull it off. So. Uh, that's one of the disadvantages of some designs where you can't, you're not, you can't get at the inner race to pull a bearing off, so it destroys it. So this is going to go on here, and then this tube will go on top. Now at this point, it's it's a lot easier because you can, it's going to be very obvious whether this is aligned or not. And then on the front. Okay, today. We're going to do uh, some final assembly and actually put things together and leave them together. Uh, this is the rear frame of the Ultra. This is the Ultra T with the tapered roller bearings. Uh, in an earlier video, we pressed in that outer race there for the rear bearing. And, and of course, I made a mess out of this by touching the hot aluminum with my greasy gloves. And I should clean that up, but I'm not inclined to do that. Here's O ring groove. So the first thing we got to do is stick the o-ring in there and here's a little tip when you're putting o-rings in a groove like this don't run around that way don't push them in that way because they'll wind you wind up with too much o-ring on the other end always so push it backwards into the slot this way and you will wind up with a little bit short a little bit less o-ring than you really need and then you can rub it in. All right, so that takes care of that side. On this side, we have a bearing retainer and another o ring. The o ring on this guy is going to go in like this, but it's going to be hard for him to stay on there, so I'm going to put it down in this first and then put this on top. Let's see if we can find that guy and get in there with him. There we go. All right, we're in there. 